Hi guys, it is a spectacularly gorgeous, over the top, beautiful, feels like October day in Austin, Texas, but it is actually Thursday, August 29th, 2019, here in the paradise of the Catskill Mountains, and I have to uh, head back <coughs> for the second day of moving a bunch of stuff around the planet in my gas sucking truck. Yes, the whole industry of moving stuff. <coughs> anyway, before I do that, I uh, <coughs> need to do what I do every day here on Collapse Chronicles, and that's bring you today's Chronicle of the Collapse. And I'm sorry, I cannot remember which one of my Alert Tribes members sent this article from Science Daily about uh, a subject near and dear to my own heart, and that is retreating, retreating from the attacks of nature. You know, I live in a floodplain in Texas, for those of you who are not aware of it. And I am assuming I can make it through this hurricane season without my uninsured house washing down the river. Um, I will be selling my house and to get off of the floodplain in Texas. It is called managed retreat. And make no mistake about this, guys. Uh, people think I'm joking. I was just talking to a friend in Austin last night and she laughed when I said this. Th th this is no joke. I'm, it's not only a managed retreat from the actual climate change, uh, smashing my house and uh, ruining my life, but it's also, uh, I'm, I'm trying to beat the impending economic collapse when I will not be able to sell my house for, for anything. This is no joke. That's the second reason I am selling my house. And the third reason what nobody is talking about is right now <clears throat> I am able to sell a house on a floodplain in Texas because the U.S. taxpayers are underwriting flood insurance. I bought the house with cash, so I do not need to have flood insurance on this house, but anybody getting a loan to buy the house needs to have flood insurance. And right now, the lenders are still approving loans because the federal government is underwriting these uh, all of these flood prone houses and anyway I'm not going to get into this whole rant again it's uh, this is a major catch-22 that nobody is talking about is keeping the American taxpayers ultimately on the hook <clears throat> for continuing to pay out on flood properties uh, in, in flood plains and hurricane zones and coastal properties uh, because if they stop insuring these properties the economy will collapse in one day what make what happened in 2008 you know look like a, uh, a Sunday walk in the park or I guess I should say a bad hair day and so I need to take advantage of the fact that people can still get flood insurance so these are the three reasons I am mounting a managed retreat from a flood plain in Texas so I was just lazy little dog now who he chooses to spend this gorgeous day inside the trailer anyway we're going to check in with science daily which is kind of summarizing a a longer article <clears throat> the case for retreat 
in the battle against climate change with sea levels rising rapidly and I would say uh, e even inland houses and floodplains, researchers advocate for a managed pullback from coastlines. And this is from a study in the University of Delaware. The summary of this study, with sea level rise and extreme weather threatening coastal communities, can you say a new hurricane barreling into Florida? It's no longer a question of whether they are going to retreat. It is where, when, and how. In a new paper, researchers advocate for a managed and planned retreat, not a short-term spur-of-the-moment reaction to a massive storm. And we will see about all of this playing out. When it comes to climate change, moving people and development away from at-risk areas can be viewed not as a defeat, but as a smart strategy that allows communities to adapt and thrive. Yeah, I'm not exactly sure how communities are going to thrive when they're three feet underwater. Anyway, that's the case for carefully planned, managed retreat made by three environmental researchers in an article published August 22nd in the Policy Forum section of the journal Science. Uh, the article was written by, I I anyway, uh, they, they go through all of the list of people who wrote this. Okay. This is A.R. Siders, lead author A.R. Siders from University of Delaware, who is a core faculty member of the Disaster Research Center. Uh, quote, we need to stop picturing our relationship with nature as a war. We're not winning or losing we are adjusting to changes in nature. Mm -hmm. Sea levels rise, storms surge into floodplains, so we need to move back. Close quote. Yes, moving back. <coughs> moving away from coastal moving away from coastal and other endangered areas such as floodplains on Texas usually occurs after disaster strikes she said with emergency evacuations and their aftermath often handled inefficiently and haphazardly instead the researchers argue that retreating from those areas should be done thoughtfully with planning that is strategic as well as managed, said Siders, quote, retreat is a tool that can help achieve societal goals, uh-huh, like community revitalization, equity, and <coughs> sustainability if it is used purposefully People sometimes see retreat as defeatist, but I see it as picking your battles, close quote. Guys, it is defeat. I am erasing the white flag. I am, uh, I am, I am, def I am de defeating, I have been defeated before I've been defeated, it's called getting the hell out of Dodge before your entire life is ruined. Call it what you want, uh, managed retreat, uh, bailing, I call it bailing, getting my ass out of Dodge. I am a climate change refugee. This is the face of a climate refugee. This is no joke. All right, where were the where were we? In the science 
paper, the researchers point out that retreat is a difficult and complex issue for many reasons, including the short-term economic gains of coastal development. Yes, uh, we've certainly got that one. Can you say Donald Trump? Subsidized insurance rates which is, uh, again, what I was talking about at the beginning, and this, this, uh, this blowback from the subsidized insurance rates, they're talking about flood insurance here, will be, uh, my guess, will, if, if, they, if the economy has not crashed already, from a myriad of other reasons, it is when these subsidies for this flood insurance is yanked out from under these lenders. That is what will trigger uh, a massive economic collapse. Don't forget disaster recovery cost. Yes, <clears throat> and of course people's attachment to the place where they live and to the status quo. Also, when disaster strikes, the more affluent residents, <coughs> yeah, such as me, the more affluent residents are more able to relocate, often leaving behind those who don't have the financial resources to move. This is another one of the uh, subjects, authors, somebody with the last name H-I-N-O. I like that name, Hino. <clears throat> Quote, no matter the circumstances, moving is hard. People have chosen where to live for a reason. And it is often difficult to find a place to move to that meets all their social, cultural, and financial requirements. One major challenge with retreat is that we are so focused on getting people out of harm's way, we miss the chance to help them move to opportunity. Close quote. Uh-huh. <clears throat> the researchers take the long view, noting that retreat may be the answer to climate change in some areas, but it may not be a step that is necessary this year or even this decade. We shall see about that. This is quoting the, uh, the article, The Challenge is to prepare for long-term retreat by limiting development in at-risk areas. You, you know, in the first place, imagine that. Uh, and, and all you got to do is uh, look at all the development going on today on the east coast of Florida as a new hurricane barreling down onto all of these cranes sticking up in the air. I would absolutely love to see that line of cranes uh, building all of those new skyscrapers today on the coast of Florida get blown off and come crashing to the ground. Wouldn't that be poetic justice? Yes. <clears throat> Where were we? Okay, this is another one of the study authors, whoever Mock is. Quote, the story of retreat as a climate response is just beginning. Retreat is compelling because it brings together so many aspects of how societies work, what individuals are trying to achieve, saving my ass, and what it takes to ensure preparedness and resilience in a changing climate, close quote. <clears throat> the paper makes note of a varieties of areas 
where additional work is needed, including coordination of various levels of government and support for relocation assistance programs. First, Siders said, communities must identify which areas they most want to protect and how to encourage and assist relocation. Quote, managed retreat needs to be embedded in larger conversations and social programs. Retreat cannot be just about avoiding risk. It needs to be about moving toward something better. So we shall see if my uh, managed retreat from Garfield, Texas to Ithaca, New York uh, is going to be a move to something better or I'm sure as soon as I sell my uh, house in a floodplain in Texas and move to Ithaca, New York that some freak storm will blow it away or something. And then of course guys do remember that I am also buying since I have no desire to spend winter in Ithaca, New York that uh, your old chronicler of the collapse will also be buying a winter retreat in Florida. I'll be buying some little probably trailer, a little waterfront, well canal front trailer <coughs> in a swamp in Florida to escape the winters of New York. So uh, this is how much I practice what I preach, but I've got to wrap up this Chronicle of the Collapse because uh, I have got to get out there and help this nice woman manage her retreat from her house on the side of the road to a little bit quieter, more peaceful place here in the collapse of global industrial civilization. And I suggest you get out there and manage your own retreat while you still can. Bye, guys.